We're going to be reviewing a paper that was recently published in the Circulation Journal that discusses the use of stem cell therapy to prevent amputation in patients with critical limb ischemia. Critical limb ischemia is a condition associated with poor circulation of the lower limbs uh, and a high number of patients with this condition undergo amputation. The reason for this is because many patients are not eligible for procedures that re-establish blood flow to the to the lower legs. Procedures such as uh, surgical revascularization, otherwise known as bypass, or percutaneous procedures such as implantation of a stent. So in these patients, there was a lot of work, and there is a lot of work being done to use bone marrow cells to induce a process called angiogenesis. So the bone marrow contains a lot of stem cells, and these stem cells produce new blood vessels in the lower legs when they're implanted in the lower legs. And these new blood vessels um, end up fixing up the perfusion defect, at least in some patients. This concept first was published in 2002 in the journal Lancet. And as you can see, it was patients with critical limb ischemia. Uh, what is demonstrated, what is shown here is an angiography data on the left-hand panel is before implantation of bone marrow stem cells and on the right-hand panel is 24 weeks after and as you can see a much higher number of blood vessels are generated can be seen 24 weeks after and the arrows point to the areas proximal areas where the stem cells were implanted at the macroscopic level uh, you can see on the left-hand side different ulcers before and eight weeks after stem cell implantation. St the stem cells were implanted in the calf, but because there's better circulation, you can see the ulcers are beginning to start healing. Now, with this in mind, the authors of the current paper wanted to ask the question, what mechanisms are involved in patients who respond in these treatments and patients who don't respond? So, um, the authors treated uh, two types of conditions that are associated with critical limb ischemia. One is called Berger's disease, and the other one is called atherosclerosis uh, obliterans, or ASO. And as you can see, those was only seven patients were treated, three with Berger's disease, and four of them with ASO. And the response varied. Uh, overall, the patients who initially had Berger's disease as the cause of the critical limb ischemia had improvement, whereas the patients with ASO had marginal improvement. This is at four weeks. Now, in order to look at what is it that causes improvement or what factors would be associated, because all seven patients received the same number of stem cells, the authors put together the hypothesis that the stem cells that are being implanted into the area of ischemia might be calling stem cells from the bone marrow, making the bone marrow stem cells go into circulation and then having those bone marrow stem cells come in and make new blood vessels. And it's very interesting, as you can see in this in this figure, uh, A and D uh, um, are A and D are the number of CD34 cells in circulation and B and E are the number of CD133 cells in circulation. Both of these um, markers are markers of stem cells. And as you can see on uh, the responders, there are seen uh, A and B as responders, you can see there's an increase, a time-dependent increase, in the number of circulating stem cells. So from day 1, day 3, day 7, day 14, and day 28, the longer time after the initial stem cells were implanted into the muscle, the higher number of circulating stem cells are present. And in the non-responders, you do not see this. So based on this, there is some rationale to believe that the stem cells that are being implanted are actually mobilizing the stem cells from the bone marrow, and it's the stem cells from the bone marrow interacting with implanted cells that end up causing the therapeutic effect. So in conclusion, autologous bone marrow therapy is effective in some patients at reducing the risk of amputation and at reducing the, reducing the various symptomology associated with critical limb ischemia. 
This was demonstrated in this study and a very small subset of patients, but there's numerous other published studies that support this point. The second point, which was nicely illustrated in the study, is that responses vary between patients and between the different underlying conditions that led to the critical ischemia. Uh, just to recap, it appears from this limited study that patients with Berger's disease uh, has an underlying condition responded better than patients with arteriosclerotic or blood trans or ASO. And the third point, and probably the most critical take-home point, is that the ability of the endogenous stem cells to mobilize it's one of the important factors of determining whether the treatment is successful or is not successful. Now, next steps of this study and of this line of thinking is that similar types of clinical investigations should be performed with higher number of patients. Again, here only seven patients were treated. And, very interestingly, is the whole concept of using stem cell mobilizers in conjunction with the implantation of cells locally. So uh, today there's a variety of different stem cell mobilizers. Some of them are on the market. For example, a Neupogen, otherwise the proper name being GCSF, is known and has been demonstrated clinically to mobilize stem cells. And there's other more experimental stem cell mobilizers, such as the mobilizer developed by Anormed, uh, recently sold to Genzyme, which is a CXCR4 antagonist. So the combination of these stem cell mobilizers together with administration of stem cells might be an interesting way to increase efficacy in treating this uh, subset of population uh, patients. Thank you very much.